Hello everybody and welcome to Yoshi1 Kenobi's guide on how to build a deck around Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. First let's go over the key card of our deck, Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. It's a 3 mana black creature, vampire cleric, legendary. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life, which is a really cool ability. And you can also pay 5 mana so that the creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. Now I've seen a lot of people build their veto decks and put in a whole bunch of cards that just do life gain and don't really impact board in any other way. And for these strategies, if you do draw your veto and that veto survives, which are two fairly large assumptions, then the deck is going to function properly. But in those games where you don't have veto, then the deck is just going to fizzle and play a bunch of cards that gain you small amounts of life and do nothing. So we want to avoid cards like Light of Hope, which makes you gain for life for one mana. It's not really what you want to do if you don't have Veto. Now the other abilities on that cards are decent, but it's not really the type of card that you want in your deck. Same thing with Revitalize. Gain 3 life, draw a card. It's not really an effect that you want for 2 mana, uh, unless you're playing some kind of really controlish strategy that really needs to gain 3 life. Uh, you're not going to burn your opponent out with revitalizes with a veto on the board. Uh, your opponent's likely to answer that veto or just kill you fairly quickly. So we want to avoid cards that rely exclusively on the use of veto. There is one card that uh, I will caveat. So Revival Revenge is a perfect example of a card that is worth the sacrifice. So the Revenge side with veto on the battlefield is in most cases game ending. So you double your life total, target opponent loses half their life rounded up, and both of these are going to trigger before the veto triggers on the life gain. So basically you cut your opponent's life in half and you burn him for your life total, which is very powerful. On top of that, the revival side is actually decent. So in games where you don't have veto, or you don't, or your veto is in a graveyard, you can use the revival side to revive a creature. So I can see a revival revenge as a fine inclusion in veto decks. Another card that synergizes well with veto is Soren Vengeful Bloodlord. Now that card, on itself, is fairly decent. So as long as it's your turn, creatures and planeswalkers have lifelink, and that lifelink is the same as that secondary ability from Vito, lifelink to everything you control, which is pretty strong. You get to ping a player or planeswalker for one, that's all right. Then the minus is where this card really shines, where you basically get to revive a card from your graveyard. In particular, if Vito's in a graveyard, you get to play Soren, give lifelink to everything, revive Vito so that all your lifelink turns into burn, and then do an alpha strike with your team and burn them for double the attack power on all your creatures. Well, one due to the lifelink and the other one due to the actual attack. The So I think that Soren Vengeful Bloodlord and Revival Revenge are the two cards that synergize the best with Vito Thorn of the Dusk, Rust, Dusk Rose. So... One way to build the deck would be to go with Healer's Hawk and a bunch of small lifelink creatures and try to poke your opponent and leverage the Heliod Suncrown abilities. The problem I have with that is that you'll have a moderately aggressive deck that pings for one and then Vito is going to come in and double that one damage into two damage. But that's on turn three. Why aren't you just playing the two damage one drop attackers instead? So uh, another thing that's important is when you build your deck, you need to have a strategy in mind. You need a game plan. If your game plan is to do a revenge veto combo, then you need to commit to that combo. If you're going to be playing an aggressive game, then you don't necessarily want to have these slow combo-ish elements in play. Uh, a good example of that is Speaker of the Heavens. Uh, it's a Vigilance lifelinker. Whenever, if you have at least seven more life than your starting life total, you get to summon four four angels every turn. So, Speaker of the Heavens cares about life, 
has lifelink, so it looks like it would synergize with Vito Thorn of the Dusk Realms at first glance. But when you look at it practical applications, what you want to do with Speaker of the Heavens is just gain as much life as possible super early so that you can cheat out 4-4 four, four flyers early on in the game. But early on in the game, you haven't played your Vito yet. Because you need to wait until you're at least turn 3 to play it. Unless you do some kind of weird ramping, but that's typically in green-blue, so you'd be playing 4-color ramp. Speaker of the Heaven Veto, which I, I frown upon at the current time. Feel free to prove me wrong, though. So, Speaker of the Heaven wants you to gain a whole bunch of life initially, and stick with a high life total to leverage that powerful ability. While Veto wants to gain life to kill off your opponent, or use or have a board with creatures and then pay the 5 mana to increase the damage from all your creatures. So I don't think Speaker of the Heaven goes well with Vito for that reason. So when I went to look up what what else can we do with Vito, I did a search for life. And what I wanted was some kind of aggressive shell for Vito. So basically the goal is to attack our opponent early, and then once our opponent tries to stabilize, use the life gain triggers uh, with Vito's ability, or use the 5 mana lifelink, to finish off our opponent. So that's my game plan. And I want to use this with the Soren Vengeful Bloodlord, uh, be, because the Vengeful Bloodlord is actually a protection against board wipe with the revival ability. It, if your opponent wipes your board, you cast Soren, you revive a creature, you have a creature in a planeswalker, they can deal with either. They deal with a creature, Soren is still there to keep on pinging and reviving creature. So it's a good insurance policy for those aggro decks synergizes wonderfully with Vito. So is there a good aggro strategy that gains some life? And then I found Smith and Swordmaster. Remember that curry favor? You gain X life and opponent loses X life where X is the number of knights you control. There was a time when this deck was quite powerful. I think it was a Gol Golgari Knights build uh, that would use the Lucky Clovers to double or triple that ability to just one shot your game your opponent out of the game. Now we can use the same trick with Smith and Swordmaster and Vito, and we'll basically deal double damage equals the number of knights you control. Then there's also Blacklands Paragon, which gives a knight death touch and lifelink against until end of turn, which synergizes with Vito's lifelink ability. Well with Vito's uh, life drain ability. So there's two knights in uh, in black that support this ability. If we want to play Soren and Vito, then we need then we can try to build a knight shell around this. Let's see what this looks like. So after trying to iron out the curve, I want an aggressive deck. So I'm playing the three one drops in white black knights. So four copies of Venerable Knight. It's a two one knight. Whenever it dies you put a plus one plus one Counter on target knight you control, knight of the Ebon Legion, probably the strongest uh, one drop in the set, well in standard right now. It's a 1-2 that you can boost plus 3 plus 3 by playing 3 mana, gains death touch, and gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter if a player has lost 4 more life during your turn. Falmire Knight is a 1-1 one, one death touch, you can also pay 3 as an adventure to draw a card. So we have three one drops that we're playing four, four copies of. Because our ultimate goal is to play Smith and Swordmaster. So we want a lot of knights on the battlefield. Also Smith and Swordmaster has lifelink, which will synergize with uh, Vito's ability as well. Since we're playing all these one drop knights, we'll play Wordy Knight, which is a, a solid inclusion. Whenever you cast a knight spell, create a 1-1 one, one to one, one human token. So you flood the board with lots of small creatures. Tree of Blacklands Paragons has lifelink. It's a knight flash. Just very good stuff overall. Acclaim Contender uh, allows us to refill our hand a little bit. So when it enters the battlefield, if you control another knight, which you likely will, look at the top five cards of your library, reveal a knight aura equipment or circle of loyalty, and put into your hand. This allows us to fetch 
or a smith and sword master or a wordy knight or whatever we need at the current point in time so it provides card advantage while furthering up our board and we are we were looking for a three drop at this point because we have three one drops three two drops so this is our first three drop slot second one being veto now we don't really want multiple copies of veto at the same time so I'm limiting it to three copies in this deck. For a similar reason, we'll top our curve at four. So we'll play the three copies of Soren Vengeful Bloodlord because of the wonderful synergies, and it allows you to revive the other knight. You can revive an acclaimed contender, go fetch another knight. You can revive a wordy knight if it dies because it's a primary target for shocks and anything else that kills creatures. And we'll play Basri's Lieutenant as our last four drop and this card is just very powerful in my top 10 i think i ranked it second very strong card in the set it's a knight synergizes with the other ones you get to put a plus one plus one counter on something on the creature you control and whenever a creature with plus one plus one counter dies you get a two two knight that uh, that gets summoned so it synergizes with venerable knights plus one plus one counter tokens uh, that, that goes to another knight. Knight of the Ebon Legion will very often have plus one plus one counters. And Basri's Lieutenant is going to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature when it enters the battlefield. So Basri and Soren both give you some level of protection against board wipes. While in different ways. And Basri being a knight, it's fetchable by a claimed contender. It's a body on the battlefield. Protection from multicolor is very relevant. So very solid card overall. And then there was one more slot to fill in. So I decided to put in a circle of loyalty. Since we're playing so many lights, having a legendary artifact that gives all our creatures plus one plus one is also a good way to end games. Also, whenever we cast legendary spell, we create a 2-2 two -two white knight. Since we're playing Soren and Vito, we now have a couple of legendary creatures. So it's worth a try. In terms of the lands, we're playing the eight lands that are black and white, and the rest are all going to be non-tap basic lands, because we, we can't afford to have tap lands enter the battlefield, except for Temple of Silence, just for mana fixing purposes. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't go with the, the knight land is because Smith and so Swordmaster costs black for the curry favor and you cannot cheat that out the same thing with the profane insight you actually need a black mana source and since we're only playing two colors i'd rather have the the explicit swamps and that is it for the deck list of orzov knights veto all right let's see this deck in action Orzov Veto Knight. Orzov Knight's Veto. Orzov Knight's with plugged in Vetoes and Soren. Orzov, the deck with many names and faces. As Nikol Bolas faces against Ugin, his nemesis brother. I have a pair of planes, which is not what we're looking for. So let's mulligan this. Too many lands, but it's okay because we get to ship one to the bottom. The rest of the hand looks fine. We'll get to Knight of Ebon Legion, to Wordy Knight, into uh, Profane Insight, most likely. So that'll keep Knight of the Ebon Legion. Probably the most powerful one drop in standard right now. The opponent is playing gates. So let's apply the pressure with the wordy knight. Now we also have the option of Foulmire into Blacklands Paragon. And our opponent only has one gate in play. The other options to boost the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Mm. 
They don't like that option as much. Let's just go for the dumping our hand on the battlefield. And we have six creatures on turn three, which is intimidating. Their opponent plays the fairy. Bouncer of stuff. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what our opponent chooses to bounce here. We're in a pretty good position. Okay. We draw into Vito. This is probably a more efficient way of attacking. Let's cast our veto. And see if our opponent has anything. An extra land will give us very little. To, well actually we can boost the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Hydro Crisis for X equals 1. Sound of Desperation. We give everything lifelink and there is no way our opponent can survive. And here even though it wasn't really necessary, the fact that we managed to use Vito's ultimate ability just ensured that we could kill our opponent on the spot on turn 5. So we did get equal use of Vito, even though we were terribly ahead on the battlefield. Alright, let's go for one more game with our Orzov Knights Vito. This is keepable 6 lander. Let's throw away the... Ugh. It's too bad we had such a beautiful curve. Kind of want to keep the veto. Let's throw it swamp. No, let's throw away the Venerable Knight. Because we'll open up with the Temple of Silence. Destroy our land to the bottom. That way we get Blacklands Paragon into Vito, into Soren. Bring out the big lifelink beats. Ooh, our opponent is also playing a Temple of Silence. Ooh, change of plan. We're playing that. Worthy knight. What is our opponent going to do now? Looking forward to seeing if Vito can do its thing. Ah, Fen Lurkers. They're the worst. Really want to play that Vito combo. But without Blacklands Paragon, there's not much we can do. Throw it away regardless. Vito Soren is just really good. And we get rewarded with an acclaimed contender. Which will fetch us. A Knight of the Ebon Legion. As we swing for two. Their opponent plays another Fenlurker. We will get the throw away our Knight of the Ebon Legion. Circle of Loyalty. We don't quite have the mana for it. Let's attack with everything. Even losing the wordy knight's not too bad here. 
You'll get to cast Veto. Yeah. That is a correct block. Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Solemn Simulacrum. Fairly decent card. Now we attack with everything. It's a trap. Uh, let's. Oh, I can only target a knight. Alright. Well, that'll still drain you for six. Well, the tree extra drain from Vito. I'll call it worth it, because the land will give us a seven powered attack. Ooh, that's quite neat. I like that. Solemn Sim Simulacrum with Yorion. And we get it. We get seven. Well, actually, we get nine points of damage. Here we go. And we get through it. The damage from the Vito Sorn combo with the damage that we had done earlier took down our opponent, even through this wall of blockers. And this is what our deck aims to do with the Veto and the Knights. We aim to deal the extra damage and finish off our opponent with the lifelink triggers, which can deal a ton of damage. As we've seen, we, we basically hit our opponent for 9 that turn, and kind of out of nowhere. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you've enjoyed the guidelines on how I go about building a solid Veto deck, and the pitfalls that we want to avoid. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to help support the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you next time with another awesome deck list.